What secrets does the amphibian brain hold? Amphibians have diverged from other four-legged animals and taken their own evolutionary path 350 million years ago. What is similar and what is different between the brain of a salamander, like the axolotl, and say, that of a mouse or a human? The labs of Eli Tanaka at the Research Institute of Molecular Pathology and Barbara Treutlein at ETH Zurich have collaborated to create an atlas of the axolotl forebrain. The co-first authors Katharina Lust, Ashley Maynard, and Tomasz Gomez have worked together to catalog all cell types of the axolotl forebrain in health and after an injury. Their work was published in the journal Science. In our paper we used single cell transcriptome profiling which is a modern technology to define cell types in a variety of tissues. And we did this for the axolotl forebrain um, because we were really interested in understanding cell type diversity in this region of the brain and also to compare the cell types that we uncovered in the axolotl to the cell types that had been uncovered in reptile, bird and mammalian brains. What we additionally did in our paper was to look at a process called neurogenesis which is when stem and progenitor cells give rise to new neurons. And curiously, in the axolotl, this process happens both in the healthy, uninjured brain, but also after injury. Now, what we had not known until our paper was whether these two neurogenesis modes in the healthy and in the injured brain are similar or different to each other. The researchers found that neurogenesis was very similar in an uninjured brain and during regeneration. The main difference lied in the early stages of regeneration, where stem cells, called ependymolia cells, enter a state that is unique to the regeneration process. They migrate to the site of injury and renew the neurons that were lost. There was one, I think, big eureka moment, which is where we looked at the neurons that were regenerated and whether they would be reconnecting to original targets. And um, we saw actually that the neurons that we had ablated were regenerated after the injury and it was super exciting for us to see that the input projections that these neurons would get, which were coming from the olfactory bulb, which is the region of the brain that is um, processing smell information, these were re-established. And I think for the future, this is what I want to investigate further, how perfect these neuronal reconnections are and whether this also results in the restoration of function. I find this study uh, foundational for several reasons. First, it tells us that we can understand a lot about the composition of um, the salamander brain through these transcriptomic methods. And so therefore, it will be important to um, not only profile the forebrain, to, but to profile all other parts of the central nervous system of the x axolotl so that we can have a complete catalog of the, uh, of the cells within the axolotl central nervous system. This will be important not only for understanding the evolution of the central nervous system, but for enabling the axolotl as a model to study, for example, how central nervous system works. The axolotl is a really good representative a simple representative of a four-legged animal central nervous system. So we expect that the functionality of um, the circuits and other aspects of the um, brain and the central nervous system in the axolotl may be simplified versions um, of what's happening in um, the nervous system of other more complex animals such as mammals. So in this study, uh, we also use the single cell transcriptomics approach to uh, make a uh, characterization of the regeneration, uh, brain regeneration um, process. So this gave us a first insight to uh, molecules that are upregulated after removing a piece of tissue uh, and how then the process of neurogenesis is reinitiated. But there's a lot of work to do uh, to understand um, how these molecules function to allow the neural stem cells to amplify, to turn into neur neurogenic cells that will regenerate the brain.